So we've been waiting for it. The Six Nations have burst into life. It's been slow so far, but two absolute crackers. Ireland, Scotland, which I won't spoil if you haven't watched that game, but it was a great game. And then England 23, Ireland 22. Welcome to this video supported by Lifting Giants. Let's get into the key moments and some takeaways. I'll try and balance the game with some themes. And we start with a try for England, a brilliant try. And Ben Earl, the player of the match, goodness me, he has blossomed in this team. It's a player who maybe it wouldn't have happened for England, but it has. And now he's their best player, to be honest. He actually puts the pressure on Crowley, the only one to charge down his clearance, which he mishits. Then Furbank counter-attacks, and Furbank is interesting. He adds speed, he adds skill, but he does make a lot of mistakes, and he is easy to turn over. So it's 50-50 who the best fullback is between Stewart and Furbank, but they wouldn't have scored this try without Furbank, because he links twice, and he puts Freeman in. There's a big collision with Nash, and Freeman wins the battle of the physics, and poor Nash has to go off. So they put Lawrence in. It's a good try. 5-3 at the beginning of that game, and it's exactly what England needed. A really good try. And after that, Ireland's attacks actually do pretty well because England blitz and we know about this blitz. It's a double edged sword and they get outside the blitz really nicely twice. But in this game, they just can't capitalise. They can't build pressure. But certainly England's attack looks the most joined up. It's been all tournament, but Ireland are very good in contact. Really good on the jackal. Van der Fleer, Aki keeps them in the game. Anyway, some good zip to England's attack. Ford and Slade zipping the passes around. It's nice and dry. They're not dropping it. It's making a difference. And they're running some really interesting attacking shapes. Varying it up. Plus, we saw a flat four attack, which I haven't seen from England for ages. It's where the playmaker like Ford has four flat options outside him. I think he picked the last one on this one. I've coached the flat two, the flat three, never the flat four. That was pretty cool. Anyway, Faye Wabusa as well makes a massive difference to England. We've been saying it for ages as fans. And sure enough, he starts and what a difference he makes. He should have been starting before. But anyway, so glad he's in and his skills are good. Some good high ball work as well. He was fantastic. Him, Freeman, Earl, busting through the tackles and offloading makes such a world of difference. They trap Porter on the wrong side. That's 8-3. England's momentum, though, it is halted by jackal infringements. They do get in trouble in the jackal. They don't listen to the ref a few times. That's 8-6. And then Ford, his kicking at goal was pretty woeful today. In fact, it was absolutely woeful. He goes for two drop goals, makes an absolute mess of them. Anyway, then there's a big call. England turned down three points. They feel they've got the momentum and they go for a trick play line out, execute it pretty well. But Dan Sheehan is an absolute beast. Stop Earl, which is brilliant, brilliant tackle there. Ireland whacking away so well in defence. England counter-attacking uh, well. That counter-attacking 15 and wings making a big difference. Another player that makes a massive difference for England is George Martin. He is a lump of a guy. England have missed someone like that. Ollie Chesham is a good player, but he's no George Martin physically. That extra heft in the scrum, I think, really helped England. And Ireland couldn't get scrum dominance, which is something they would have hoped. Plus, he hits super hard in the tackle and he carries in contact really well in close. Ireland break up their momentum by holding up Henry Slade, who is a bit of a weak link in attack sometimes, a bit lightweight. And Aki and Henshaw are monsters, so they swallow him up. But again, Ireland, they can't you know, link anything together in attack, but they're only two points down and they're fighting hard. And yeah, that selection for England is working well. Lawrence is catching the ball, making gain line. Martin is you know, that safe guy at the front of the line out, that extra line out option and that big man. And it's just working a lot better. But yeah, Ireland's muscle in the tackle doing really well. Bundyaki, an amazing tackle, release and jackal. He's class. Crowley from long range, good penalty. They go ahead 8-9. Then we get George Furbank with one of his mistakes and he made a lot of mistakes in the last match. He made a lot of mistakes in this match. But he did do some good stuff as well. Let me know what you'd score him. I'll probably come back with an England rating in another video. But he takes his eye completely off the ball because there's a tackler lining him up. I think it's Keenan. Really poor stuff. And he drops the ball in England. Wastes a couple of chances that way. An interesting note here that in the scrum, in defensive scrums, England putting Chesham at eight so they can get Ben Earl on the flanks and use his pace. So they're just using Ben Earl to his maximum, not just leaving him at eight in defence. 
Then, on 38 minutes just before half-time, James Lowe steps up and his left boot is a monster for Ireland. Brilliant clearance forces Furbank into another mistake and England give away a soft penalty. So actually, it's 8-12 at half-time, even though it looks like England have had their best half of the Six Nations. They're still not in the lead, so that is a bit worrying, but fair play to them. They don't panic. And a word for our sponsor, Lifting Giants. No need to cut out these foam blocks for lifting. Properly shaped lifting blocks tested. They improve your line out lifting. And if you want to get a pair, 20% off with the code RUGBYANALYST20 in the promotional code below. Use that link. After half time, a big moment. Brilliant take from Keenan in the air. Goodness me, he's so good in the air. Then our old friend, the Blitz Defence, kills England there as Slade tries to shut the door, but he shuts it too far and Crowley just dummies and goes behind him. So he's out of the line and James Lowe is in with a really good finish, 8-17. So at that point, you're thinking, OK, Ireland, they're the class team here. They're going to step up and go away from England. But it's a great game. England are actually starting to play a bit. They're counter-attacking. Faye Wabusu making the initial inroads. And then George Martin, I think, maybe he should pass it. But he's so strong, he can take the tackle, get the momentum, then offload. Nobody else can do that, I think, for England. And then Atoji tips on, and we have a try to the flying fur bank. So that is 13-17, and a terrible conversion attempt from Ford. I think he should be taken off at this point. He gets taken off quite soon after that, but kicking at goal, drop goals, conversions, were all shockers from Ford because he's not a running attack. So he's there kind of as a passer, at which, you know, kind of... Is good, he passes well, he links the attack well, but he doesn't do anything else. So it's an interesting one there. Smith comes on later, and surely he has to start. I mean, you could say he even got it the right way round because they won, but Smith's a starter for me all day long. You know I think that. Let me know if you think differently, but I think this game kind of confirms it for me. Anyway, a little bit of a sting for Ireland with a 6-2 split because they lose two men early. Frawley staying off with the HIA. And Gibson Park, their best scrum half, can't play there. He's good on the wing, but he can't play at scrum half because he has to go to the wing because you're not going to put Murray there. He's not quick enough. So that probably hurt them a little bit as well. They can't weaponise the scrum, so that was hurting them. Theo Dan's on. He gets given half an hour, actually, off the bench, which is more and more time for Theo Dan. Surely he's going to inherit George's shirt fairly soon because he came on, did well in the line-out, and he carries that much harder. He's that much quicker. Anyway... Ireland hitting heavy in the ruck. It's putting so much pressure on England. It's keeping them in the game, as I've said. And even though Ireland haven't got into attacking flow, they're kind of doing enough at this point. And that is the sign of a good team when they're not playing well. They're still leading. Then we get the big momentum moment. A fantastic individual break from Ben Earl. Nothing's on. And that's why you need special players in a rugby team like Ben Earl. Goes back against the grain and just bursts through. Peter Amani is kind of panicking. He knows he needs to slow it down. He knows he's good at slowing down the ball. But he goes off balance, dives over the ruck. Yellow card for sure. That's an easy one. And Marcus Smith is on. And they actually hit their fourth line-out jumper off this crucial line-out, which is interesting. Sam Underhill, who isn't a tall guy, but they bypass the other three, go to Underhill to the back. And then it's the heavies. Martin carries, Bernal smashes over and reaches for the try and they go in the lead to 2017 and they do deserve the lead. There is impact off the bench, Cunningham South with some monster hits and unfortunately Cunningham South gets injured. It looks nasty, it looks like a knee injury. I hope it's not the old cruciate knee injury but it did look like it. I hope he's okay because he's been a revelation certainly as an impact player. Anyway, Ireland, they're not quite themselves. They just can't build the multi-phase. They have plenty of field position. It's a great crescendo to the game, but they can't get that absolute pressure that they normally do. Then some subs on for England that I'm not too sure about. Danny Kerr wins his 100 caps, and I don't think does that well, actually. Slade is off. I don't know if it's a knock or not, but Daly's on at 13, and I'm not buying that at all. Um, we've got better 13s than that, but... He immediately uh, botches a kick that gets charged down from Aki, uh, but brilliant from Ben Earl, who's just an absolute baller of a player who rescues it. In the last 10 minutes, the game has slowed down. Lots of box kicks. Then on 70 minutes, it looks like the moment that wins it for Ireland. Like we said, Furbank is quick, but goodness me, he's quite lightweight. He's easy to put down. He gets isolated. Turned over penalty that launches the best Ireland's attack. Furbank, unfortunately, with a double mistake. A little bit tricky, this one. He blitzes up just a fraction too late. Brilliant scoring pass from Gibson Park to Lowe. 20-22, and it looks like they've done enough, but it is within a penalty. 
Bit of gamesmanship from Otoje. He does that well these days. He doesn't get pinged as much as he used to. He gets away with a bit more. He chooses his time. He wins a penalty. And I don't like this option for England. They go for a 50 metre plus penalty to Daly. And that's a low percentage play. I know he's done a couple in the past, but I didn't like it. And it doesn't really go anywhere near. They really should have gone to the corner. I thought they'd blown it right then. But Cunningham South is smashing away, making some good impact. Yeah, not feeling daily, not feeling a care at all. And Danny Kerr, goodness me, his passes look so wobbly. They look like dead ducks at times in the last phase of play. I mean, nose up, wobbly, no spin, no pace, but it's okay because Feo Wabusu is a power monster, smashes down some players down the right wing, penalty advantages, but Smith doesn't need it, and he pops over a drop goal from right in front. And everyone goes crazy. It is a deserved win. It's a cracking game. Ireland didn't play their best, but England put them under a lot of pressure, and definitely that team selection was so much better. So no grand slam for Ireland, but they could still win it. They probably still should win it. England, they could nick the Six Nations. Who knows? Crazy finish to the game. What a good round four so far. Pop all those comments below and I'll catch you next time.